Are there other mechanisms of complication from excessive seed oil? Yes. So the, as I mentioned, those four, four pillars of hazard, I call them. So, so we have the inflammatory processes. So when you consume high omega-6, that drives production of arachidonic acid. And the downstream effects of that is, is all inflammatory mediators. Um, prostaglandins, eicosanoids, thromboxane. So this is driving inflammation, vasoconstriction, um, and clotting. Right, and so, so that's the inflammatory pathway, and everyone around the world accepts that pathway. Then you have the the third pathway of of destructive effect from the seed oils is um, the uh, what I call the toxicity, which is through the advanced lipid oxidation end products, and these advanced lipid oxidation end products are they're they're chemicals like. Um, 4-hydroxynonanol, 4-H&E, malondialdehyde, MDA, carboxyethylpyrrole, acrolein, 9 and 13 HODE. Um, all of these are downstream metabolic effects of linoleic acid actually oxidizing. Well, these advanced lipid oxidation end products, or ALs, um, they are ultimately cytotoxic, genotoxic, mutagenic, carcinogenic, atherogenic, thrombogenic, obesogenic, and diabetogenic. I mean, could we get any worse? Yeah. And this is just the toxicity part of it. So you have that, that arm or pillar, if you will. And then finally, the fact that these, all these oils, no matter if they're really healthy, really low omega-6, like coconut oil and palm kernel oil, um, even the good ones like this, they have no vitamins A, D, or K2. You won't find a single molecule of, vit of retinol, active vitamin A, or vitamin D, or vitamin K2 in any kind of oil. Well, butter, beef tallow, those ha are good sources of those vitamins. So they're also nutrient deficient. So just put all those together and you just have the recipe for metabolic disaster and physical degeneration.